Now, for those of you who've been waiting patiently for us to get to LMN time and how it works with QuickBooks, we're here. You've done your setup work. You've set up your chart of accounts. You've set your service items up. You've got your payroll items ready. We built an estimate. We exported it to QuickBooks. Now we're ready to take a look at how to track time for a job in LMN time and how to make sure that time gets exported to QuickBooks for pinpoint accurate job costing in less work than you're probably doing today with your payroll and timesheets. The purpose of this video is to show you how we can set up to make sure that LMN time pays your staff correctly. And that includes not just the regular wages, but regular wages, overtime wages, and any other wages you might pay. Like if you pay higher rates for certain types of jobs like snow work or prevailing wage work. We'll also take a look at how to make sure that the job costing for the wage expenses gets assigned to the correct job and gets assigned to the correct service item on that job so that we can not only just look at the job in terms of revenue and labor expenses, but you can break that job down by the type of work, hardscape, softscape, maintenance, etc., and look at your cost that way. Some basic assumptions that we need to get clear moving forward. Again, that we're going to be using QuickBooks for payroll. Number two, that the staff are all set to create paychecks from time data. It's not going to work if you don't have that setting on. We covered that in the last video. And of course, that you've watched the previous video on setting up the LMN Time QuickBooks Sync. If you haven't watched that yet, make sure you watch it now so that that stuff is all set up before you get into actually creating a job and tracking time. We're going to run through these steps in this video on how to set up jobs in LMN Time for perfect time tracking and job costing. So we're going to create the job in LMN time. We're going to make sure that we assign cost codes to any of the tasks we've built for the job. That's a critical step because that's going to make sure that it links to the correct service items in QuickBooks for job costing. We're going to make sure that we're using the right payroll codes for the job. Most of the time you barely even need to do that. But if that job has an exceptional pay rate, that's where you can override the defaults. We'll match the job to a QuickBooks job so that we make sure that job is correctly matched. And then we'll go ahead and export the time and we'll see how that time gets exported for perfect payroll and, and job costing. So to start out, we're going to jump into LMN time and we're going to go to jobs. Now there's two ways to create a job in LMN time. You can create it from scratch using the new job button or you can import an LMN estimate. Now if you create it from scratch, it's not going to be linked to a QuickBooks job and you're going to have to do that using the QuickBooks Sync tool. You can do that at any time. You can always open up that tool we looked at in the last video and match this job from LMN time to this job for QuickBooks so that even if you didn't use an estimate to create it, it will still be or still able to be linked to QuickBooks. Now I'm going to choose the import option because I already have a job set up and it's one that I've already exported to QuickBooks. So there's already going to be a link there. I won't have to set up anything. So I'm going to click up import and I'm going to do a search. And Sandra Alberts was the job we used in the previous video. So we'll continue with that job all the way through. I'm going to here click the import button. And what it's going to ask me is, which of these tasks do you want to import for the Sandra Alberts job? So those are all the tasks I had estimated, plus two default tasks I have for every job. Those defaults are changes and extras and materials uh, deliveries. To find out how to set up default tasks, go to the settings screen, default tasks, and watch the help video on that. You can see now each work area has also been assigned a cost code. And those cost codes are the service items it's going to link to in QuickBooks provided I've already set up that link and we did that in the last video. So I'm going to hit import now. What it's going to do is automatically from that estimate we created, create an element time job. And underneath the tasks, each different work area from that estimate is there and it's grouped by cost code and I've got estimated hours for each one and that's what's going to drive my uh, time tracking. The guys are going to click one of these tasks that they're clocked into. And it's also going to drive how it gets exported for time tracking and job costing using the correct cost codes. If this export looks too complicated for your guys, for example, let's say I've got the patio in the driveway and my excavating crew is going to be doing that all at once. And it's going to be difficult for them to break out their time between one and the other, especially if front yard and backyard, maybe not so bad. But if you're working in the front yard, you've got retaining walls and a patio and, and a driveway and it gets difficult to track, well, how much time did we actually spend digging out the patio versus digging out the driveway? Because it's probably all done at the same time. 
make it simple on your guys, you always have the option to merge tasks. And I can click these two off down here and hit merge. And I can just call this front hardscaping. The cost code will be hardscaping. And the estimated hours will be the total of these two jobs. So I've just made it one step simpler for my guys rather than separating it on that level. Obviously, you can't merge tasks that have different cost codes. You're going to have to pick one cost code to use, but you can merge your tasks here to keep things simple. Now that I've got this set up, I'm ready for time tracking itself. When employees fill out a timesheet, they're going to go add timesheet, we'll pick a day. They're going to add a new job, and the job that they're going to pick is the Sandra Alberts job. They're going to hit next. So now I'm going to pick who's in the crew today. So there's myself and Marcus, Greg, and let's say Greg's off today, but I've got with me Josh and Leela. So I'll check them off and hit next. Now it's time to assign the tasks. And this is, again, just going to dictate that second level of job costing. We'll know these hours are going to go to this job, but if you want to know how much time you took on hardscape versus softscape versus whatever, you need tasks to do that. So here I can pick the tasks. And let's say everybody's working on the front hardscaping except for Leela. She's going to work on the garden. And Josh will be working on the um, landscape lighting. So there's our task set up. We'll hit next. I'm just going to backdate my time to the first thing in the morning. And we've got our timesheet created. At the end of the day, the guys are going to clock out of the timesheet. And now we have that time being booked to the correct job, to the correct cost code that's driven by the task, and my, my time cards will be active. Now, I've already created a week's worth of timesheet for this job just to speed things along. If I go back to jobs now and open up Sandra Alberts and I go to review, you can see I've already started booking hours across these different tasks. And if you look down here down the timesheet entry, there's all the different timesheets and activities we worked on this week. And I'm going to use that information here for the timesheet export reporting. If you happen to pay this job a different pay rate, you can change the payroll item settings right here on the job. So for instance, my hourly wages are just going to default to my job type default. If I needed to pay prevailing wage for this job, I could go down and click my prevailing wage payroll item, and it would take every hour that we worked on this job and apply that employee's prevailing wage rate. So it'll automate pay if your jobs pay different rates depending on the different job. Most of your jobs are going to be the standard but you can override it if you need to. Now the system for overriding it looks like this. When it comes to wondering what payroll code to use, it's first gonna look at the job payroll items. Now the job payroll items are right here on the job screen under the payroll tab. If these are set to something specific, those are the payroll items it's gonna use. Now mine are set to job type default. Job type default is the next thing it checks. And it looks for the payroll settings under the job types. To find that in LMN time, you just go back to your main menu, go to the settings, and go to job types. And underneath the job type, now this job is an install job. And underneath my install job type, under the payroll tab, I have hourly wage and wage and salary settings. So I could set specific settings for this uh, job type. And you can see more of that in the help video for job types. It'll explain. But if it was a snow uh, type, for example, I can have specific wage types that I pay for snow work. In my case, for installation work, it's all going to be my regular hourly rates. So assuming this is set to the default, it's going to go back to the next payroll thing to look at, which is my regular payroll settings. And to find those, I'm going to go to payroll. And there they are right there, my default payroll codes. So the default payroll codes I'm going to use whenever I export time to QuickBooks is my regular hourly wages, my regular hourly overtime, and if I've got a salary person, my regular salary. Those would be your normal defaults. And then, of course, on any job type or on any specific job, I could override these normal defaults with a specific prevailing wage or snow type wage setting. Once you've got that set up, you just need to make sure that your timesheets are filled out by your staff and that they're approved. LMN time won't export 
timesheets that are either in progress or submitted but not yet approved. It's only going to export approved time. Once you've got your timesheets there and they're approved and ready to go, you're ready to export that time from Element Time over to QuickBooks. And we'll cover that in the very next video. So stick with us here. Once we're done the export of time, all our wage information is going to get job cost to the job in exactly the way you'd like to see it. Element Time can always show us real-time estimated versus actual hours, but QuickBooks will be able to show us the actual cost of the wages compared to the revenue that we earn. Really give us good job costing information, again, without any extra work, probably less work than you